Oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today. And today, we're revisiting uh, an old friend. We're taking a look at Cubasis 3 on the iPad. Now, for those of you who have been around the channel for a while, you would know that my favourite place to hang out is usually around here. This is my comfort zone. This is my spirit animal. It's called GarageBand iOS. It's a free app and it is amazing. You can use it on your iPhone or your iPad and it does a marvellous job of recording your songs. I've recorded albums, EPs and singles and a whole heap of music using GarageBand. However, GarageBand does have its limitations and I've been getting more and more questions lately from folks saying, Pete, I want to be able to do things like use a master track, automate effects, use sends and receives. GarageBand just doesn't cut it for me anymore. What do you recommend? Well, what I want to do is find out whether this is going to be my recommendation moving forward because this is Cubasis 3. Now, Cubasis is made by Steinberg, uh, and full disclosure up front, they were kind enough to give me this copy. I checked it out in a video series, which you can check out down in the description, where I went through six different videos, and I learnt how to use it. And what I'm doing now is we're circling back, because in the month of April 2021, I will be creating a whole song using Cubasis. Now, the reason for this is not that I'm going to abandon GarageBand. So before everyone, you know, goes and riots in the streets, you don't have to worry too much. I still will be using GarageBand. We still have GarageBand Weekly and I'll still be using GarageBand and making tutorials to help you get the most out of it. But I do want to expand out and really find out what Cubasis can do and who it's for. Because guess what? It's not going to be for everyone. Horses for courses, yeah? Different strokes for different folks. So if Cubasis is going to be right for you, we're going to put it to the test. I'm going to be your guinea pig. So kicking off tomorrow, we're having our very first show, which I know is not quite April for many folks, but it is for me here. So tomorrow, we'll be jumping in and we'll be taking a look at Cubasis for the first time or the, the second time around, but we'll actually be creating an entire song. So what I want from today is I'm going to have a little bit of a play around and a fiddle here in Cubasis just to get my bearings and to get things right again and to make sure I remember where everything is because it's a very different kind of interface as you can see here. There's a lot more going on. There's a heap more options that we have and a lot more things that we can do here in Cubasis than in GarageBand. So hopefully by the end of April, I'm at the point where I can answer questions about Cubasis. I know whether for me it's going to be the right thing and then I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to you and you can decide. Now, uh, upfront, Cubasis is not super cheap. The, the full version of Cubasis 3 is about $50 or your country equivalent. I think it's about $80 here in Australia. So it's not the cheapest thing. When you compare it to something like GarageBand that's free, it's really hard to compare, isn't it? Free versus paid, because no matter how many times better it is, free is still free, yeah. So my recommendation as always, and will continue to be, I'm sure, after doing this, to, to learn in GarageBand. Learn with the free tool. GarageBand has a whole bunch of instruments. You can use loops. You can record your own instruments in there. You can use an audio interface. So there's really not as many limitations as many folks think there are starting out. But when you hit that point where you want to do some different things, you want to do some some of the cool features that we have in Cubasis, that's where you may want to jump on over. So keep all of that in mind as we go through this one. And again, if it's not for you, that's totally cool. But again, you get to find out uh, for free <laughs> uh, right throughout the month. Plus, we get, we're going to do other things. Because I'm going to be creating a song, we'll be uh, showing you know, songwriting and how to actually come up with lyric ideas and a hook and an intro and a chorus and a verse and all that stuff, how to record it. So we'll be talking about the gear, you know, the, the microphones that we use, the audio interfaces, how to actually get everything hooked up to your iPhone or iPad. We'll be testing out some new gear. I've just got this one from, uh, from our friends at IK Multimedia. So we'll be checking this one to do some recording on the go, the iRig Pre 2, which is brand new audio interface that looks uh, very, very cool. So there's a lot of things that we can actually do in this month. So if you've been around for Song Timber, it's going to be a bit like that, but with a different kind of flavor here with a very cubasis -y flavor. And uh, you'd also recall that I did a GarageBand Mac series doing very similarly. So we recorded my song Murdering Time, which was the last sing single that I recorded and released. That was all in GarageBand Mac. This time around, it's going to be right here in Cubasis. Uh, let's, uh, let's say hello to the folks who are here live, because there's a heap of them, including I have an idea which is a very cool name. 
I, I just, I, I love names like that. So Ivan has thrown a super chat and says, it's my first super chat. I wanted to make sure how it works and I owe you and a few others big time. Well, thank you. Because it's it's folks like Ivan Idea who keep the lights on around here because without people like Ivan, this is how we'd look. But thanks to people like Ivan Idea, uh, we can keep the lights on. There you go. There's an early joke there. Uh, hello to James Kimball, who's here, uh, who was here early as well. Uh, we've got Mark Bro. Thanks for being here. Tom Richelle Russ is here. Uh, we've got uh, uh, Tempo Bob. Again, you folks with your cool names. Everyone's got a cool name there. Jade Star's in the house as well. SMB04. What is up, my friend? Uh, everything is up. IOS Magician. Thanks for being here. Joshua Good. No relation to Johnny B. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Gu Guiham Cruz. Hello to you. Uh, by the way, if you do have questions, as I'm saying, g'day to folks. If you do have questions, just throw them in the chat here. Put the word question in front. Uh, that will be uh, that will be the easiest way for me to see it. I don't have any time to spare, but I miss Pete, so I had to see him. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Good to have you here, even if you can drop in. And don't forget, you can catch up on the replay. Uh, howdy from Gig Harbour. Where in the world is Gig Harbour, Cliff Hall? That's, that's very cool. Uh, uh, Len Burgess says, uh, can't load up District Kid from iPhone. It doesn't accept my recording with GarageBand. Yeah. So again, semi-related, but we will be releasing this song. The song that I create, the song that doesn't exist yet, that I'm going to create here in Cubases, we'll be releasing with Distro Kid. Uh, now, I am going to try and release it from the iPad itself because I know it's there's, there's some challenges. We got it working. So there is a video, if you're a member of my Patreon, uh, we did a video where I tested it and I tried every different method and eventually we found a way to actually get it done. So it does work, but there's a few things to keep in mind with that, Les. So um, if you're having trouble with it, um, feel free to reach out in the meantime and I'll try to help you. There was a few things you need to do. Actually, I'll tell you right now. So the short version is you need to make sure that you have your your album artwork on your camera roll and it's got to be at least 1,000 by 1,000. I recommend 3,000 by 3,000. Have your song file as a WAV file and have it stored on your iPhone or on your iPad. Don't have it in your iCloud drive or anywhere else weird. Have it right on the location on your device. And I think that were the only two things that we need. Oh, and use uh, Google, was it Chrome or Safari? Might have been Safari in the end. I'll do a video on this soon. Hang around this month. But if you're having trouble in the meantime, uh, I think we ended up using Safari in desktop mode. So your browser needs to be in desktop mode to upload audio to DistroKid from your mobile device. If your browser's in mobile mode, it simply will not ever work. So that was the way we got it working. So uh, hopefully that helps you out. Uh, Turbo Bob says, looking forward to this, haven't been able to get up and running on Cubasis 3. Yeah, and uh, by the way, there is also Cubasis 2. So if you've, if you've got Cubasis 2, there are some differences, but not a heap. So you're going to be able to follow along and, and probably uh, get some ideas in Cubasis 3, uh, even if you're using Cubasis 2 and you haven't upgraded yet. You might be able to see the different things that we can have. And I'll, I'll take you on a tour around. We won't be doing a whole bunch of recording here today. Maybe we'll... Uh Maybe we'll record in a few bits, uh, but I'll take you on a bit of a tour around if you are brand, brand new to Cubasis. Or, of course, you can check out my previous videos as well. Um, if, they could, uh, if they could skip that stupid wall and put the knobs elsewhere, uh, what wall is that? I don't know. We'll, we'll explore every part of the interface and everything. Uh, hello to Saul. Good. I hope you're well. Uh, to Washington State. There you go. Washington State. I hope you're doing well there. Uh, hello to Stian Mandelid. I uh, hope you are doing well as well. Tom has Cubases too as well. And it is uh, it's past midnight. I know. For my friends. And that's probably another question I do have for you. Because we're going to be doing this series all through April. This is probably about the time that we'll be doing them, or I can probably push it an hour earlier. So uh, for, if there's folks in the US, uh, sorry, in the UK and Europe, because it's midnight here now, and then our clocks change again, and it's going to get even later, I might be, be able to pull it earlier. The other thing I might do is make some of the times different, do some earlier shows and some later shows, just so folks can try and catch some of them live. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll be a bit of a mix and match thing. But don't forget, you can always come back. So we, whilst we stream live to to Facebook and to YouTube and now to Twitch, <laughs> shout out to Jade Star, who's got us all on the Twitch bandwagon at the moment, which is cool with our music, because we're streaming to all of those places. You can catch it live. But if you want to catch the replay, just jump onto YouTube. And hello to anyone who is here on the replay. If you have questions, if you have suggestions, the good thing about this series, if you've seen these series we do before, is that they're fully interactive. 
So because we do it day by day, if you're following along and you leave your comments and you leave your suggestions, we can tackle those. We can also take live comments, but if you leave a comment on the previous video, I read all of those and then we tackle them again. And when it gets to things like writing lyrics, uh, that gets uh, that can be pretty cool. So I've got a few questions for you here today because we're going we're gonna to start shaping this song. Even though we're not working on the song here today, we're going to start shaping the song as well. So what style of music do we create? So I'm open to suggestions. Do we do something? Do we do some pop music? Do we do some rock music? Do we do something electronic? Uh, if you're here live, I'd love to do. I'd love you to just put that here in the chat, and we'll talk about that and uh, your reasons as well, if you want. What 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 I should create and why? What we can use to put Cubases to the test? Because here's the thing: we want to make sure that we have the ability to have tracks here that are MIDI tracks, like we've got here with this piano. We also want to be able to have audio tracks. So I want to be able to record some vocals, some guitars in there, maybe some live instruments as well. Maybe we're going to use some loops get some drums in there, some drum loops and other things. So there's a lot of options that we have in here. There's a heap of loops and things in here. There's a heap of different plugins and effects, but we need to have a type of music. So the first thing, the first question we're going to go with is what is the style of music that we're going to produce here? So if you have an idea, pop it here in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, uh, that's what I want you to put as your comment. Put uh, Just put jazz or put reggae or put whatever it is. And you know what? I'll tally it up. And whatever is the most popular that I can create, uh, if you say Scandinavian yodeling, uh, we, we may be not producing that. But uh, if it's something that I can produce, whatever you would like to see. Because again, this series is going to be for you and uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be jumping into that. So um, oh, James says, I meant to say wall in GB. I don't have an interface. Ah, yeah, okay. Don't have an interface. Yep, fair enough. Uh, so let's see if we have uh, any ideas. So blues rock we've got. We've got an idea there from Gustafette. A blues rock song could be kind of cool. Bit of 12-bar blues in there. Uh, yeah, let's, where's, where's our piano? So you'd, you'd get a bit of like the... Oh, we're going to go down, don't we? I've got, to, I've got to remember how to use this. <laughs> don't do that, Pete. So uh, I do like this piano roll, that, this, so this piano view that you can actually just move the piano like that. That's one of the cool features. So yeah, you could get a bit of blues going... Oh, that's too low. <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, I hit the track and then dropped it off. Well, we got some sustain. That key got stuck. <laughs> it's like a real piano. It's like a piano I once had where it sticks it down afterwards. Uh, rock or metal. Yeah, that could be good. We did uh, we did a rock metal song uh, for Song Temper last year, and that's definitely a style that I can play and that I can do. Uh, Piant chant? Uh, pl plain chant. Let's see, now I'm going to have to learn what that is as well. <laughs> uh, great if you could keep live drums in mind also. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm going to start taking notes here because live percussion is something. I don't have a drum kit. So that's, but what I can do is we can do some live percussion. So I can get a tambour, get some shakers. We can do some recording of percussion in so that we've got some live instruments to actually EQ. So whatever, whatever we do, um, I will do some live percussion here. So we've got uh, ideas, we've got blues or rock. And what, what I might actually do is once we get all of the ideas here, we've got rock, metal. Once I get all the ideas down, uh, I'll put a poll up. Um, so I'll put a poll up here on the YouTube channel, and uh, if you follow me there and on the community tab, you'll be able to vote and work out what we do. Uh, Mark says I would go with rock 80s style to get both real instruments and synths. See, I like that, Mark. Uh, 80s rock, um, and that's for yeah for instruments and synths. And you know what? That's that's a front runner because uh, 80s is big at the moment. Like the whole 80s vibe with the synths and the, that that 80s sound. We could have some fun with some gated reverb on some snares. Uh, let, let's just uh, as we go again because this is going to be a bit freeform here today. Let's let's bring up. Uh, I've got to remember how to do this. Let's bring up some loops. Uh, I think I do it. It's audio here. Audio. Oh, so we've got drum loops. Do we have non-drum loops? Let's just see if we've got anything that can be like an '80s, like a funky groove. Let's just see if we could get inspired here. Uh, now I've got to remember how to play these. <laughs> Double tap. Oh, there's a play button. Oh, I've just added it. That's right. It's in. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, and see here now I can test my memory of how we do this because you can actually you can actually stretch your audio. So you'll notice there that we've added these drum loops in there, and they're not lining up to our one hundred and twenty BPM. But that's okay because Cubases 
has the ability to stretch your audio, doesn't it? So we can grab this, we can grab that handle, put the stretch on, put the stretch on, and you can grab the handle and stretch it out. At least I think you can. <laughs> uh, see, I've got to remember how to do all this stuff. This could be fun. Uh, oh, auto, oh, auto brought it back. There you go. It auto stretched it. You can go stretch. Do we do it again? Auto. All right. So let's put it into four bars. Let's just see what this has done. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Uh, you, you, I will get better with it, but it'll be interesting to see the progression. This will be a, a document over create kind of series. Yeah. So. There you go. So yeah, we've got some drum loops that we can start out with and start creating around. I've got I've got to get used. In, in GarageBand, things are so different with how you like skip between things. So, but by the time I get to the end of the month, I'll not be able to. I'll not know uh, what I'm doing there. A bit of country. You know what? We should uh, we could do like a progressive Queen style song that goes through all of the different uh, genres. A uh, bit of jazz. Yeah, a bit of jazz. Jazz fusion. Like if we do '80s, we could do an '80s an '80s country rock jazz fusion song. It's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got some love for Mark's suggestion there from Tom about the, the, the 80s so that we can get some synths in there. Um, Russ says, all my tracks were done in Nano Studio 2. Uh, no audio tracks to pain, but I work around it. Yeah, Russ is, Russ is a bit of a, uh, a hero when it comes to using Nano Studio, which doesn't have audio tracks, but is able to still get uh, audio in there using, uh, using things. Uh, Tom, Tom will let you in on my joke. Cool. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. All uh, right. So, yeah, if, if anyone has any other ideas, then do go ahead and let me know. Because uh, we've got 80, 80s country, rock, jazz, fusion, and polka. We're going to add polka. I'm going to put it down. It could be fun. Like, we could just do our whole thing where we change it. Because that's the thing. Um, someone let me know if it's true. But can we do, we, do we have multiple key signatures and time signatures that we can use in here? I had a feeling that you could actually change things up. Or maybe I'm thinking of Aurea Pro. There you go. Uh, plain chant is the acapella chanting that monks did in church back in the Middle Ages. So I should be looking this stuff up, shouldn't I? All right, let, let's just have a little bit of a play while we uh, while I get my bearings on this. So if we're going to go, we've got some funky drums. And this won't be the song, by the way. Unlikely to be, but it's, it's fun for me because I'm just relearning this. Uh, let's let's go to our track add, which is down the bottom here, and we'll add MIDI. I do like, we've also got track groups here, which is going to be fun to play around with if we have backing tracks and other things as well. Uh, but let's add this one and r try and remember how to actually change our instrument, which uh, I think we can do over here, can't we? Yep, there we go. We're in the microsonic instruments here. We've got some cool basses. Where's some bass? <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to search or find things here. I'm going. Oh, we'll learn. We'll learn as we go. I just want to find a bass to just lay down something. Oh, we got some drum kits. We've gone too far. We've gone too far. Vibraphone. Yeah, maybe a vibraphone would be cool for something a bit. Maybe not that low. <laughs> Let's just get a bit of a, a bit of a groove here. And uh, we've also got we've got the keys there, but you can also put it into pad mode, can't you? Which is here. That's kind of that's gonna have a bit of a reggae vibe to it, isn't it? Let's just record something in, shall we? Just to, just to get my hand back in. <laughs> there we go. Oh man, it's all coming back to me now. I'm gonna have to learn all the quantizing, learn how to use this piano roll again. But the good thing is, what I do like about Cubases is that we can actually move things around. Yeah. You can actually get everything in the place that you want it to be. And I've got a, yep, you can move around your notes here. You've got, you, to be honest, it is going to be kind of small here on my 11 inch iPad. Did I, did I mention that I probably should have got a 12.9 inch iPad to do this sort of editing? So yes, yeah, some of these things here, like I can't, I'm going to have to look up here on my screen to actually see what all of these are. So you've got things like velocity over here and you've got, I don't even, oh, so you can move them move things around but we'll we'll learn all of that we've got our velocity down the bottom here wow look at that's right you got all of the different midi options <laughs> i'm gonna have to spend a day just learning uh relearning my general midi stuff right and you can select multiple things 
with the select option there. You can turn that off and then just do single selections. Yeah, so it's it's lots of stuff going on under the hood here. Pete's gonna be uh, gonna be getting the old grey matter working throughout the month. Lisa. Yeah, I kind of like that. I don't like that low down bit, so let's move some of these notes. <laughs> I've got to remember where my undo is now. Undo is at the top there. There we go. Did I mention this is going to be... What, what I like about doing stuff like that is that it will be somewhere... It'll be interesting, but there'll be some train wreck elements to it. So if, if you like watching uh, watching someone struggle, you're probably going to find... <laughs> Because see, now I've got the grid snapping. <laughs> Undo, run away, Pete. Uh, the, the things that I know how to do in other places, I just don't know how to do here. But that's okay. Um, why don't we plug in a microphone just for some fun? Uh, we'll, we'll, see if, uh, we'll see if we've got any other, uh, other suggestions. If you're still going, uh, dinner is served. Bubba, Bubba's making dinner. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you, IS Musician. Yeah, stream as you learn. And that, that's the way it's going to be. It's not always going to be quite as bad as this because I will be practicing uh, and then being showing you what I've learned as opposed to doing it all live like this. But we'll, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> in you throat singing. Oh, mate, uh, maybe I need to do that. Let's, let's plug in a microphone and do some throat singing, shall we? So what, I'll be, what will be joining me along this journey, and you can't see it here because it's off camera, uh, but I will get for some of these where I'm actually doing vocal recordings and things, I'll get a camera behind me so that we can do a multi-camera shoot and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. But I'm using my old faithful. We're going all style. Steinberg, uh, the, the Yamaha Corporation are going to be very happy <laughs> this month because I'm using my Steinberg UR22C to record into Steinberg's Cubasis 3 software. So let's plug in my mic and let's just make up a little, a little ditty to go with this, shall we? So I'm just going to, I'm going to go handheld today. Actually, no, I'm not. I did prepare. I didn't think I'd prepared. I forgot that I prepared, but I did. We've got, uh, we've got this here, except you know what? I've got the wrong kind of, uh, the wrong kind of mic on there. So we are going to go handheld. <laughs> but good preparation, Pete, but uh, it's not worth it. Just to show you how this all works. So uh, again, the, the good thing is that Cubasis does combine kind of the best of both worlds when it comes to electronic and actual audio. So we've got you know, a couple of electronic tracks there. We've got MIDI, we've got drums set up there, but we've also got uh, this one, which we've apparently recorded something into. So let's delete that. Uh, erase. Yep. And let's see if I can remember how to set up a track for actual recording. So if we come to our track here, this is an audio track. Uh, is it under routing that we need? There we go. Mono input one. Yep. There's our two inputs. So we've got our two channel interface. We've got input two, which is uh, my what my guitar usually plugs into. We've got input one there. Uh, we need to remember how to do monitoring. Is that this button? Check. check. One, one, two. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think you were being sarcastic at all. Um, yeah, I, this is the way I learn, and I think a lot of other people do as well. And I think uh, watching me bumble through it will be both entertaining, but hopefully somewhat educational. And then by the time I get to the end of it, uh, we'll all know what we can and can't do. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, no, I, I, I completely completely agree uh joshua good says i actually had nano studio one and used to love it yeah i've never tried nano studio maybe this is um maybe this is the start of something because uh just just so you know i i did as i said garage band ios is what i use for most of my song timber songs uh, i did one in garage band mac which is murdering time i'm doing this one and then i've been i've been challenged to use logic on a mac so uh, that's that's going to be interesting because if I think I'm going to have problems learning Cubasis, <laughs> wait till we try Logic. Uh, so let's uh, let's throw, throw this on. on. But there, there it is. is. Uh, we'll, we'll use some insert effects here, shall we? Uh, let's see, see if we can remember, remember how to add an effect. effect. And uh, the, the good thing, thing is that uh, the I'll just take that away. Um, the, the the good folks at Steinberg uh, have actually set me up with all of the Waves plugins as well. So we'll be using a lot of the free stuff on here. So I'm not going to just use all this, but we also do have all of the uh, all the add-ons, all the the Steinberg add-ons here that we can use. And of course, we can use um, Interrap Audio as well. But let's grab say the uh, stereo delay here from our FX pack. Check 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 check. Bop bop bop. See, this is cool because we can dial in just a quarter note delay here or we can go to like a 16th. That could be kind of cool for a bit of sort of reggae dubstep that this sounds like. So let's uh, let's just record something in randomly, shall we? And see uh, if I can remember how this all works. 
One thing I don't quite get is why we don't have any representation of it there. Let's turn that monitoring off. That's annoying. Uh, you don't have any monitoring. Uh, so you don't have the ability to see what you're recording as you're recording it. You just get that little spinning thing there, which is a bit distracting to me. I kind of like to see the waveform created as you record there. But what I do like is that we can instantly make things red because they go faster. So you can, you can really clearly go, all right, my drums are going to be yellow, fellow. Uh, my, uh, my MIDI instrument's going to be green. And then you can, you can get your colors sorted. And you'd hopefully choose better colors than Pete has there because they look shocking. All right, uh, let's, <laughs> let's play this back. Oh, why not play? Because I'm not at the start. Get your playhead to the start. You better go to your I think that uh, that effect might be a little bit too much on that one. But again, we could quickly turn... Oh, can you turn that down? I thought that was just a slider that we could turn that effect down. No, we can come in here, though. Uh, let's just put a little bit of that effect in the mix there. And why don't we... See, I, I do like the channel strip here. So on every channel, uh, you've got this channel strip. So you can quickly do your filtering, your noise gate here. You've got compression. You've even got some nice uh, saturation there that you can drive it up. So I always like to rub my vocals in the dirt a little bit. So uh, let's just play with this. Better go to your home Because it's where you live don't know where those vocals came from. But this is what you're going to get. This is what you got to look forward to in the next month. Just randomness like this. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's record another vocal track just quickly. See if I can remember how to duplicate a track, hey? Hey! And it actually duplicates the audio when you duplicate a track here in Cubasis, which is kind of cool. And it auto, like when you solo something, it auto-mutes the other things, which is kind of cool as well. I do like that. So let's delete this audio. See, look, it's all coming back to me. Is erase the only delete button? I'm going to go with it. Oh, let's um, let's do some, uh, this time we'll do some sort of, uh, oh, that's, oh, that's right, it's got the same delay. We'll turn that off. Uh, we'll, we'll do, do some, some backing, sort of, oh, and build out a little bit of a loop here. Oh, you better go to your... I have my, uh, my vibraphone muted, so let's undo which I nearly always remember where it is. And I've also got the... See, I'm getting used to this because see how I had both of those tracks recording? I need to only have this track recording. Let's just uh, see what this sounds like. Let's record like that. Because it's where you live. And again, we've recorded that in. And then, you know, we can, it's pretty quick. Once, Once you get the, the workflow, workflow going on here, it's actually reasonably quick to do this. You just need to remember what you're doing there. So what, what note did I sing there? Uh, 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 let's see up again. Let's just get a little bit of a, uh, this is turning into a reggae tune, isn't you? I hit the same note on one of those. Oh, I hit the same note on one of those, which is not good. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's coming back to me. It's all coming back to me now. Uh, just got to remember to get into the groove of create the track. And the one thing is I tend, I get a bit overwhelmed in here with the clutter. So what I tend to do is when I'm sort of doing things, I'll just get everything else out of the way. I've just got to remember how to put that bit back like that. So yeah, once you get into the editing, um, I get everything else out of the way because the way it works with the, the different modules coming in and out actually is good and it can help you. But yeah, when you get to this point where you're trying to actually just do your editing, I like a nice clean interface. Uh, but yeah, the, the other good thing is um, here in Cubasis, you've got, oh geez, what have I done? Go back to the start, please. There we go. Uh, you've got all sorts of other options here, such as your panning, and you've got automation of things like panning. So with your automation here, um, you can set up your, your automation to be not just on your volume, but you can set up panning automation as well, which is kind of cool. And you can like, I can't remember how to do it now, but we'll, we'll learn it. I think you can draw it in, can you? <laughs> you can draw in some panning, uh, which I put on the wrong track there. Let's put some, let's put some on these uh, backing vocals, shall we? We'll come down. We'll go to this vocal 
and we'll go automation. We'll open the automation editor and we'll go to the panning and we'll draw. Why is this not working? I can't remember. That's all right. We'll, we'll play around with that later. Let's just go to our mixer and just get the sounds mixed in. So we've got a nice mixer here with just your normal things there. You've got your panning here so we can pan. I think we can pan. <laughs> oh, I've got to remember. Oh, there we go. You can pan to the left. You can pan to the right. And I think, is this the one where you can, yeah, you can increase the size. So you can go small, medium, or large, and you get a whole bunch more stuff that you can do there. So now we've got our two backing vocals, and they're panned left and right, and they sound like this. Live. Very cool. And uh, we need uh, we need a little bit more reverb on those, don't we? So, uh, you know what? Let Let's try something a bit interesting. We're going to. Uh, sorry, I'm getting I'm getting excited. You can tell. Um, the other cool thing that we have here is you've got send effects as well. So you can create an effect track and you can send it to that. So you can see we've got this reverb on here. We can actually have our reverb track separate and then send a little bit of each of these into the reverb track itself. So rather than having just your insert effects here that are right there on the actual one, we can have send effects here and actually control how much reverb is on each of these tracks. See, so we can turn it down a little bit and you've got control over that right there. Uh, let's just see if this has worked. <laughs> you better go to your home Cause it's where you live I'm unsure if that's worked that well, but we'll go with it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got everything coming in there together. Let's, uh, let's listen to, in the space of 15 minutes, what we've created. And it's probably none of the ideas that you've got there. You better go to your Cause it's where you live. So yeah, fairly easy to get up and running and get started with this because everything's right where you need it. Uh, you've got all your media in one spot. You've got all your mixing options there. And then when you're playing your instruments, you've got either the pads or you've got the notes. Well, oh, that's a big keyboard. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's quite easy to do. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, see who has jumped on in and any comments uh, that you may have. Hello, Sion, who's jumped in. Hello, Zivon. Um, Gobi G Major is here. Uh, I'm just going to go right back up and see where I was up to before I got off uh, on tangents. Uh, hello, Ian or Ian, Alt Rock. Alt Rock for the win, right? Hello. Hello to you and to everyone. Uh, hello, Bubba, who's back after dinner, I saw there. Uh, we've got Go Go Gobi G Major. Thank you. Yeah, Russ, we, we don't, Russ doesn't love the piano roll here. It is, it is fiddly. Uh, I'm going to crack it, though, Russ. Not like that, but I'm going to. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to become a piano roll expert. I'm going to know every option in this thing and learn how to use it because uh, if, it, if it's the death of me because there's a whole heap of good options in here it just seems to be less intuitive than some see like I'm, I'm trying to try to quantize it's not moving the notes <laughs> like they're not going anywhere but yeah I'll, I will learn it and I will conquer it eventually um, and we've got a whole month to do it. Uh, yes, Les, Les Productions of On, good to have you here as well. Uh, where, where else was I up to here? I've missed that. Uh, question here, have you ever made a beat to your favourite movie or TV show to see if your edition would make it more watchable? <laughs> hey, there you go. Maybe I could write a song in dedication to Married at First Sight or The Masked Singer. They're my favourites. No, I haven't though, but I like it. Um, like TV theme. That could be kind of cool. We could create, as well as a song in April, we could like create a fictional show. Like I like the whole idea of the 80s synth rock kind of thing. We could create, like we could get a name for it and create like our own like 80s cop drama called um, Cubasoid. It's about a, a robot crime fighting dog that lives in Miami. There you go. Uh, Sion says Nano Studio 2 currently doesn't have audio tracks. It is super similar to GarageBand in design, and I really like it since. Cool. Mm. Uh, thank you, Bubba. Yes, if you're having some fun, do go ahead and, uh, and hit the thumbs up. Uh, there's a new punk band making a name for themselves here in the UK, and I love their stuff. They're called False Heads. See, I love names. Names are the best. False Heads. 
<laughs> Hello over in Twitch land. Yeah, if anyone, uh, if anyone would like to follow along over on Twitch, we are streaming to Twitch and I'll be streaming the whole month uh, on Twitch as well. So we'll be creating the song. Um, <laughs> Sion says that song spoke to my soul. I better go to my home. Yeah, you better go to your home because it's where you live, right? <laughs> home is where you live. Uh, Le Production says that one thing I like uh, Cubases is to create uh, collage with samples using a few audio tracks. It's easy to adjust levels, fades, change pitch and stretch if needed to samples individually. Yeah, we, we do need to play around with some samples, don't we? Uh, I must admit, I haven't, I haven't quite worked out where that is um, within Cubases. I, it's taking me a while to get used to the interface uh, in terms of how to, if I brought in some one shot samples, how that would actually work. Uh, do I have any handy that I can actually just add or are there any included in here that we can do? It'd be in the media browser, wouldn't it? Uh, audio, my samples. See, I have none. <laughs> my audio files, sample pack. No, there's nothing here. Uh, can I get to, can I get to my regular stuff? I don't think so. I don't think I can get, out to files, can I? I'd have to put them into these locations. We'll definitely play around with that in the future because that would be good. What are the Alan Morgan signature drums? Okay, let's uh, let's let's test one of these, shall we? They're his signature. Oh, it just added it. <laughs> what does it sound like? Uh, oh, they're cool. I like it. Um, I, I can't remember how to how to preview things from down here. Where's, where's the play button for me to just preview this before I bring it in? This and a whole bunch more, uh, I will learn <laughs> as we go along. Uh, good times. But yeah, no, good good thing. We do need to do that. So that's going in the list here. Live percussion. We also need to work on samples and loops. Uh, we need uh, microphones, of course. We need some guitars. We need synth synthesizers um if there's other things that you think we need to incorporate in this because i want i want this to be everything i want to try and put cubases to the test so if there's other things types of tracks types of audio that you think we could record in here then let me know uh oh koala sampler would be good yeah get some koala sampler samples and put them into cubases could be fun uh let's see where we're at i'm just catching up with the chat here uh, Eddie, Eddie Windhorst, uh, joined late, love Cubases. Well, I love the, the, the music you're creating. So if you're creating a Cubases, maybe I'm in the right place, but we'll be, we'll be finding out. Uh, good to have you here. <laughs> Mark said, that's a pretty good start. But my song, uh, you're bad at God. it's a little bit weird, isn't it? I don't know if it's uh, appropriate. For, for, I always sing in accents. When I sing a type of music, I'll sing accent. If I'm singing country, I'll sing country. If I'm singing reggae, I'll sing like a, like a Rastafarian. Um, and as we all know, when I sing uh, Irish songs, I get all Irish and I don't know why. It just, it just goes into my head. Uh, no problem, Lee. Uh, thanks for being here. We'll catch you around soon. Uh, the keyboard sounds like ones at the kids' store. Yeah, the floor keyboards, the the movie Big, uh, where they had Tom Hanks and the, the toy shop owner and they're sliding around on the thing. Or, or the Simpsons version where Homer like jumps on it and breaks it. That's the other one. Uh, hello to Derzen, D D Derzen Low over there on Twitch. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, again, by the way, twitch.tv slash studio live today. If uh, anyone wants to follow over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash studio live today. I must update my description so that uh, you know that I'm there as well. But we'll continue streaming right here on uh, Facebook and YouTube as well. Uh, hello, SG Pro. I uh, hope you are well as well. And uh, who have we got? <laughs> uh, yes, everything you're writing is doubled. So you better go back to YouTube. There you go. You can you can hang out wherever you like. Um, finally, we have GarageBand production on Twitch. Now we iOS folks don't have to be left out. Yeah, I, there is a bit of a gap. And, and again, shout out to Jade Star. She's definitely leading the charge for, for we mobile creators to get over onto Twitch because there's not a lot of it going on there. I think we need more music education and more music creation happening on Twitch because it's a cool platform and it's not just for gamers anymore. So uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be over there. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> just as I say, great platform. I see a couple of... Um, I see a couple of ads and spam in Twitch. Oh, fun. Uh, Chris K, are you using an iPad Pro? Yeah, absolutely. I am. And that's actually a really good question. So again, I'm putting these ideas here. So I'm on the iPad Pro. What I need to do, because I know not everyone's rocking the iPad Pro. I also have my iPad Air 2. And I also have my iPhone. I've got the 12 Pro. And I've got my 10S here as well. So 
what we need to do is using all of these, I think we need to see how well we can take it. Because the good thing about Cubasis is that it's on phone as well. So Aurea Pro, for instance, is only iPad. But Cubasis is on uh, phones and tablets, and it's even got an Android version. Uh, I won't be using that because I own exactly zero Android devices. But uh, yeah, I, I, we need to look at transferring projects between devices and also uh, what uh, the performance is like on each device. Because if I'm sitting here on my iPad Pro 2020, it's going to be crushing it, yeah. But what if I use do the same project on an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 6 even? Maybe we need to try out some of those other devices. Let me know. Again, these are all just ideas, but the reason I wanted to do this show is to get your ideas because this is going to be your series. We'll be hanging out. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed it. Can you turn off all effects entirely for exporting? So, yeah, I, I, I think so, but I think I don't think there's like a button here. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I think you would have to go to your all your tracks and check your insert effects and then just export. I don't think there's a instant send out your stems mode, which would be super cool if there was. Uh, but it looks like what you can do is you can see that these little blue lights only come on when there's actually something there. So as soon as you turn off any input, any insert or effects, it's only where there's something in there that you actually have that. Oh, that's right. You got this here too. That's cool. If you're in the editor window and you don't want to go to your mixer, you can actually change all your mixer settings right here, which is kind of cool. You can change your panning and you can change your that. We do have the ability to actually change your output. So I've only got the one stereo output here because I'm using my Steinberg UR22, but maybe that's another another option. Maybe we can plug in the UR44 that you can see behind me. Well, you can't right now, but uh, there. Maybe we can throw the UR44 in there and see if we can use like multiple outputs and, and record four tracks at once. Why I would record four tracks at once, I have little to no idea, but maybe we do that. Uh, John says I have it on my Android device and Cubasis 2 on iPad. Ooh. Very cool. Uh, I'm just using a, a standard iPad 2018. Will that run Cubasis okay? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, and that, that's what we're going to check out. So I'll, I'll, the oldest device I have is an iPad Air 2 uh, that's running iOS 14. So I will use that. And I think that would be about the minimum. I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't use it on, you probably can, but I don't think if you start adding a bunch of tracks and effects and things, if you're using it on anything that's running iOS 12, A, I don't think it's compatible. At least Cubasis 3 may not be compatible with iOS 12. And I don't think you get the performance anyway. So I would I would pick anything uh, that, that can actually do that, that can actually um, run iOS 14. And if you, are, if you are new to iOS music production or you're considering what you should do and whether the iPad you are considering or that you have is going to be good enough to do this, uh, I actually have a guide. So over on my webpage at studiolivetoday.com slash iPad, you can check out this one. We've got the iPad buyer's guide here. So I've got videos there about my, my review of the 2020, the best iPads for musical produ music production, and the 2020 models compared. Of course, where the rumor is we've got an April event coming up. So as soon as that April event, uh, if that announces new iPads, all of this will be updated. But it was last updated in September 2020, which is when we got the last new iPad. So yeah, that iPad, the regular iPad, is a, it's in my recommendations for the best all-rounders. My daughter owns one and it crushes. Like GarageBand, I haven't actually tried Cubasis on it, but she edits in LumaFusion and she uses GarageBand and they run beautifully because that's running the uh, A12 processor. A big processor upgrade. The previous iPad was on the a9 this one's on the a12 really nice ipad ipad pro second gen and the ipad mini uh, are good all-rounders as well as far as the best budget and entry level ipad air 2 ipad 2019 and the ipad mini 4 and the best performance of course you're looking at the ipad pros the 2018 and the 2020 and the ipad air fourth gen the 2020 model and uh, if you want to see the comparison of all those, you can actually check out the comparison chart here. So it's going to look a little bit small there. Can we embiggen it? We can. So you can see here, it's got every model of iPad ever made from the first gen with the A4 processor right up to the iPad Pro 2020, the fourth gen's there. And you can see cost, how much RAM they've got, what chip set they're running, all of the specs that you need to know about uh, your different iPads. So uh, yes, if, you, if you're in the market for an iPad and you want to check that out, then uh, go ahead and do that. And uh, no, you're, you're very welcome, my friend. I uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks for your support. Uh, and uh, Mark says, I do have the 2020 iPad and it runs fine. There you go. Uh, David says, make sure you have multi-core rendering off when using older iPads. Otherwise, you have issues running Cubasis 3. 
Good stuff. See, I'm, I'm writing all these things down. So what do we... Multi-core rendering off. Because I will do... I will... I'm taking notes as we go, but I will cover all the different options and all the different settings that we have because um, I last time I used it, I just went for it and didn't really do anything. But here in the setup, you've got a whole bunch of different settings. You've got your project settings, you've got audio settings, MIDI, keys and pads. So I'm assuming it's somewhere in here that we can turn on or off that. So I'm going to be reading the manual. We're going to be RTFMing together as we go through. And you know what? You can't see any of that because I still have that in front. Let's try that again. Down here in the setup, we have all these settings, project, general, audio, MIDI, keys and pads. So you can change the way it works and functions and uh, we'll be looking at all of those we'll be looking at all the different things you can buy which as you can see because uh, Steinberg is super nice they've given me all these to play with so that I can show you what may be worthwhile doing so um, yeah that's uh, that's going to be a lot of fun too we're going to go through all of that here uh, Bubba's got the first gen pro 12 inch no problems here uh, though I've never tasked it so Bubba hasn't put it to the test uh, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, and Gobi G Major, I've got the iPad Pro 11 second, 11 inch second generation. Uh, it's, on, it's set up under audio. Let's let's have a quick look here. So if uh, if you are doing this setup, audio and Bluetooth. No, 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 no. Uh, so we've got latency there. So look at that. We've got. See, this is pretty cool because it tells you your. Uh, you can set your latency here, uh, which I'm assuming will change your your buffer settings and things like that. We've got offset co calibration there for audio recording. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff: background audio, studio quality, play audio tracks. So I don't see it specifically which one it is, unless there's more down below, but I can't see. So I'm not not sure, but I'm sure it's one of these that I just can't read because they're so small. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's it's different on different iPads. So yeah, we'll definitely do an episode where we basically go, oh, audio latency. There you go. It's definitely um, we'll definitely do one where I go through different devices and we check it out and we try the same thing. So we'll grab a project, we'll pop it over onto different devices, and we'll look at things like uh, yeah, the the latency and some of the options that we have, and also sort of uh, iPhone versus iPad stuff. So there we go. Yeah, yep, yeah, audio latency. So yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be able to uh, play around with that stuff as well. Um, where are we at? Uh, I think we're we're coming towards the end for this show. Uh, so hopefully this has given you an, a bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing over the next uh, week. Let's, is there anything else that we need to try here before I uh, ask my final question uh, before we finish up the show? If you do have questions, feel free to ask them as we go through. Uh, is there anything easy that I can add in here? We didn't get any bass, did we? Let's see if we can find a bass loop that might... See, <laughs> loops are going to be hard, aren't they, to, to use with this. And I still haven't found my play button of how I can actually just test something from here because it's not playing automatically. And when I do that, it just adds them in, <laughs> which I didn't really want to do because it'll sound something like this. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, how can we undo? Undo. Hey, there we go. Um, but yeah, I wanted to find some bass. So let's just see if we can find a little bass so we can get some uh, nice, nice beefy bass sound in here before we finish up this. And then I will let you get back to your day and to regular programming. Let's grab a MIDI track. And we've got it on the piano here. But we don't want the piano. We want something different. Uh, no, we don't want to name the piano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's gonna be some. It's gonna be some frustrating times where you're yelling at your screen, going, "Pete, it's there! It's oh, you just went past it! Oh, no, no, go, not there! Go back!" Um, I wonder if we can use an audio unit. Uh, do I have any cool bass sounds? That uh, don't really have anything installed at the moment that's got a good bass. Uh, what about the digital D1? This could. Uh, I'll get some factory presets on the D1. Uh, Seventy psychedelica. Is this going to work? Oh, this is the one where I couldn't work out how to actually make it work <laughs> when I added this before. Um, there's, there's like one button that you press that actually just makes it all work. And I couldn't, I, could, I, I remember not being able to figure this out. And then someone had to say to me, Pete, you just do this one thing. So if you remember what that one thing was and why this may not be working for me now, then uh, you can do that. And uh, I, will, uh, I will love you forever because, um, yeah. I've had, I had this problem last time when I was trying to use external instruments. 
Jeez, where am I going? I'm trying to go back into uh, back into there. Uh, let, let, let's just go back. Let's let's go and actually grab the uh, the microsonic, the ones that are built in, and find a base from here. <laughs> uh, base, analog base. All right. There we go. Uh, we'll, we'll use this one, and we'll come back out here, and we'll go to our keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and see, once I'm in this mode, uh, I also don't know how to get back down to the other mode. I think I just do that. No, I don't do that. This is going to be it. There we go. I'm back to my back to my regular stuff. Back to regular programming. We will get better, folks. It will get better. Let me just see if I can. Uh... Oh, so now I've muted out everything else. <laughs> At what point did I mute everything? Oh, you're going to be like Pete. This is this is hard to watch. Uh, all right, now it's gonna pass. You better go to your home, cause it's where you. All right, let's uh, let's just add some bass, and then I promise I will uh, I'll put I'll put the you out of you out of your misery. We'll we'll, we'll end the misery. Two, three. You better go to your home, cause it's where you live. And then we have that at the end. Uh, arm the record track. Did I not have the track armed? <laughs> uh, am I talking about Ravenscroft 245? 275? Yeah, not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll probably use some Ravenscroft in this if, if, if we have piano required. Depends on the genre that we end up going with. So uh, we'll come back to the start here. You better go to your home Because it's where you live and then we'll remove this weird bit at the end here because that doesn't work. So there you go. Uh, we, we got there. But there, there's clearly some things to learn, right? Clearly, clearly some things that I need to learn and that I need to practice. But Cubase is three. It's going to be pretty fun, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I hope it will be. Hopefully it will be interesting uh, and uh, a learning experience for all concerned. Um, and uh, as Mark says, won't fit in my workflow, but I'm sure I'll learn something new. And that's the thing. Even if you don't, even if you're not... Uh, not worried about Cubasis 3 or it's not something that you're interested in, you'll get to find out for free and you might even um, learn something along the way that will help you in whatever you're producing. Because again, we're going to tackle everything. I want live instruments in this. I want synths. I want electronic instruments. I want drums. I want some hand percussion. We want to just make it everything. We'll see how we go. Uh, uh, Chris says, uh, what's your pre preference, Cubasis or GarageBand? Uh, let me hold that answer. Talk to me in 30 days' time, <laughs> and I'll be able to tell you. Right now, absolutely, it's GarageBand because it is just where I'm, uh, where I'm at. Uh, and we'll, we'll finish with this one, a tip from Sion. Cubase's LE is free to download. There's also some great MIDI loops in the application if you check the Files app for Cubase's. Excellent. We'll be checking all this stuff out. But yeah, really good point at the end there. If you do want to try before you buy, you can get the LE, the limited edition or the light edition of Cubasis from the App Store right now and try it out and see if it's for you. Play along at home. It's got some limitations in terms of tracks and in terms of recordings and things. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something that you can check out and you can do it for free. That is going to do it for this one. Uh, if you did to get some value out of this one, please hit the thumbs up or the likes or the bits or the whatever you do in any of the platforms you're at. Uh, we will be back. There'll be a schedule of shows uh, happening at various different times. So keep an eye on the channel here. Make sure you're on the mailing list. So head over to studiolivetoday.com slash email. That'll get you on the mailing list. And then you'll be able to find out all of the shows that we have here. Do jump into the description as well because I've got a link to my playlist of Cubasis videos where I first learnt Cubasis 3. I'll probably be going there right now to re-watch those videos and relearn all the mistakes that I made along the way last time so that you don't have to watch me make them all again. Uh, do hang out also for the weekend. We've got the usual round of shows. We've got Your Music Live. If you're an independent uh, artist and you want to submit a song for that, studiolivetoday.com slash YML. We'll have our happy hour, GarageBand Weekly, and of course, the uh, Creator Town Hall. So thank you everybody for being here. Let me know what you think. And again, 
that final question that we have, if you want watching on the replay, jump down and put a style. I want the comments to be filled with your style request. What type of music should we make? And I'll bring together the probably the top five ideas, and then they'll be thrown out to a poll, and whatever you decide, we create. And that's the way we're going to do this as we go. We'll, we'll do a lot of interactive stuff. So the topic of the song is another one we'll do. The name of the song, uh, yeah, or, or the lyrics, we'll, we'll do it uh, as a, a interactive event here over the next month. So I know this isn't an April Fool's because we're still a day before that. But thanks again for being here. Uh, as we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourselves. When you're learning something new especially, be kind to yourselves. Don't get frustrated. Remember, every failure is just you learning what doesn't work, which is just as important as what does work, right? So be nice to yourself, be kind to others, and keep on creating in GarageBand, Cubases, or wherever you choose to do so. Thanks, folks, and I'll see you next